If you want to add effects to your Blender projects without diving into complex simulations or node setups from scratch, then this collection of free Blender add-ons will give you just that. Quick, customizable effects tools for stuff like rain, smoke, fire, liquids, crowds, and more. So whether you are after atmospheric touches, stylized explosions, or effects like wind, water droplets, and more, I think these add-ons are gonna give you some quick solutions. And most of them rely on geometry nodes, or lightweight shaders, meaning they can helpfully work in real time without problems. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's start with Dynamic Rain. This add-on gives you a quick way to add rain effects that actually interact with your scene. Once installed, it creates its own collection where objects need to be placed if you want the rain to react to them. Otherwise, it will just pass right through. You can control how fast the rain falls, which also changes how it behaves. Slow rain gathers together, and fast rain splashes. However, there is a bit of awkwardness when the drops collect around an object, especially the edges. But it works well with EV and cycles as well, especially when you want to simulate soft rain or more energetic splashes. You don't have to deal with complex simulations either. It is more like dropping a prefab system that you can tweak. Now, if you want smoke in your scene but don't know how to run full simulations, smoke scatter might be what you're looking for. It skips the heavy physics and instead scatters smoke textures through geometry nodes. This makes it lightweight and way more performance friendly, especially for slower machines or quick scene building. It works best in EV since it relies on images instead of true volumetrics, but the results still look pretty convincing with the right lighting and depth of field. You can control things like density and distribution, so you're not stuck with a generic preset. It's especially useful for atmospheric shots, like fog, light battlefield smoke, or background haze in a forest or industrial scenes. It is not gonna behave like fluid smoke, but visually, it fills the space nicely. Now, moving on to another free add-on called Fire Scatter. This one is kind of a sibling to smoke scatter. It uses PNG textures to simulate fire scattered across a surface using geometry nodes. Once applied to your object, you can tweak things like density, scale, rotation, and even the flame color. One important thing though, it only works with EV, because in cycles, the planes just show up black. To make it look like actual fire, you will need to rotate the flames to face upward and maybe thin out the density a bit. Once you have done that, it gives you a pretty solid flame effect, without much performance cost. It's not volumetric fire, but for things like burning debris, stylized effects, or background elements, it does the trick. And since it is just texture based, you don't have to wait for any baking or simulations. The next add-on is called Procedural Crowns. If you are trying to make your scene look alive without manually placing tens or hundreds of characters, then this add-on can actually help you. It uses mixable characters and procedural scattering to generate crowds in just a few minutes. And from what I can see, the system lets you adjust crowd size, spacing, and randomness, so you can make a dense city square or space out group at a park. As you might expect, the characters are basic, and there is no real AI or pathfinding. But for wider shots or background elements, I think it works really well. The next add-on is called Water Shader. It is a shader pack designed for water surfaces, and the add-on includes a cycles-only material that comes with animated caustics using textures in addition to dynamic foam via geometry nodes, and adjustable water settings like clarity and depth. It runs in Blender 4.1 and forward, but it includes the rain generator that only works in 4.3 due to the reliance on newer geometry nodes. For stills or short animations, especially in scenes like lakes or flooded ruins, this add-on gives you enough visual complexity without having to touch fluid simulations. The foam and caustics aren't physically accurate, but they are stylized and can add a lot with good lighting. Everything is tweakable in the material panel or modifiers, so you can customize the look depending on your project. And the freezing effect add-on lets you create ice buildup on any object and it is procedural, so it doesn't rely on sculpting or painting, you just apply it. Adjust the spread and detail, and it overlays the icy texture and geometry for you. You can control how thick the frost is, 
and there are built-in cracking patterns and shaders that help sell the effect. It is especially handy for fantasy scenes, or maybe frozen props, or moments where an object transforms into ice mid-animation. In addition, it doesn't interact with physics, it is just a visual layer. But the results can be clean, also reversible, so you can animate the freezing process if needed. Next, we're going to talk about an add-on called procedural coating. So if you've ever needed something to look like it is oozing, dripping, or getting slowly covered in slime or paint, this add-on delivers just that. It is a free procedural system that creates a floating surface effect, which is going to be perfect for things like goo, toxic spills, or even stylized corrosion. Once added, the add-on generates an empty as the origin point, but you can easily replace it with any empty in your scene for better control. The effect flows naturally over the surface, with customizable settings like coding width, factor, detail, and DR to adjust the spread, thickness, and randomness. It comes with preset materials, like a procedural toxic slime, and everything is geometry based, so it works well with EV and cycles without baking or simulations. So whether you are making some goo, stylized liquids, or something like that, this add-on can give you fast results with a lot of control. The next add-on is called Water Droplets Generator, which as you can imagine, is designed to generate droplets on 3D surfaces, for things like wet glass, drinking cans, or anything that should look like it's been exposed to moisture. It uses procedural placement to create small droplet meshes with random sizing and spacing. You can actually control the overall density, in addition to shape variation and placement behavior. Also, as you can expect, it is geometry based, so it works on both EV and cycles, and it can even hold up for close up shots. When paired with transparent or reflective shaders, it really helps sell the effect. It is not animated or dynamic, but it is great for static details or adding that final touch for realism of your renders. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about an add on called Liquid Bubble, specifically the free version of the add on. So it's got some limitations here and there, which is expected. It includes two presets and a basic glossy shader that works in both EV and cycles. Some parameters seem to behave differently depending on the preset, like one might react to a setting while the other doesn't, so it takes a bit of experimenting to see what actually affects the look. Also, the bubbles won't automatically stick to surfaces, but with a few steps, like applying the modifier and using proportional editing, you can shape them where you need to. It is not a full simulation, but if you're going for something like underwater details, potion effects, or stylized bubbles in general, I think it can add a nice touch. Just keep in mind it is a free tool, so things might not always work as you expect them to, or the quality isn't gonna be as great. And there you have it guys, if you are interested in these free add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, you can also check some of our previous videos, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.